that is the output of the of the vector graphics unit uh, and are the x and y we have in the deflection unit of our cathode ray one additional output only one bit is needed for turning on and off the set axis uh, turning on and off the beam to make it dark or bright also an i o pin and these 8 bit values for x and y are parallel on the pins so we need to make them somehow to a x and y voltage which is done by digital analog converters they are not on the board they are separate uh, units around the board i put them around to get these uh, these voltage the functions the functions we programmed get built into parallel hardware imagine again you have that die of the, of, the, of the FPGA, and there could be function one, function two, function three. If you program the FPGA, they can be in different regions. The functions get different regions. And if you turn on the FPGA and it gets the programming, all these functions start in working in parallel. And they could work on the same data structures and totally corrupt them while working everyone on the same thing. And to prevent that, we have to do the thing that is the abstraction layer in Vivado HLS. We have to add directives to, 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 to define the hardware behavior. And the hardware behavior should be, OK, build them all in parallel, but please work them through in a sequential order. Let's move to the rasterizer. For the rasterizer also, how is it displayed? And the rasterizer is kind of easy of displaying. It's a pixel display, which we all know from our phones, from our laptops, from the desktop monitors we have. They're all pixel based and they have a resolution. The rasterizer I uh, build will work with a resolution 1024 by 768 pixels. Each pixel has its own RGB for red, green, blue value. And the the, um, the data, how the data gets to the, to the display is bound to a protocol. I'm using the VHA, VGA uh, interface. There could also be DVI, HDMI, display port, and each of them is bound to an own, own protocol. And as I'm using VGA, we go through the VGA protocol a little. Um, VGA starts with the first pixel on the left, upper left then goes line by line till it's at the end and then it starts again up in the upper left so line by line this here is the visible area you will see in the monitor but there's also a little overhead behind the lines and below the picture which is not visible which can be used for things that might be done might be needed to be, to, to be done um, not in the visible picture we will get to that soon uh, one, one remark about that, um, there is a pixel clock. Depending to the protocol of FG, uh, VGA, there is a pixel clock which is, in my case, 65 megahertz, and that steps through the pixels. So we need counters, H count and V count. Um, these counters work with a pixel clock, and every time the, v, the H count is here, you increment V count by one and so on, till we're at the bottom of the picture and everything gets set, reset to zero, zero. And that the monitor can see, can, can measure the signal and define at which RGB value, which pixel is corresponding to it, we need synchronizations. These are synchronization signals that go out on the VGA connector to the monitor and he measures them to see the connection between pixel and pixel clock. This is the whole, <laughs> it's kind of confusing, don't, don't worry, we'll go through it. This is the whole thing of the rasterizer components and what I apply to it is a concept of display memory. There are two display memories, these ones. This is the one who holds the actual picture, picks the actual picture and this module reads out of this and gives it to the VGA connector RGB. Oh, what queen blob, sorry for that. Um, this is a second 
screen memory, which has the same size. They all can fit exactly one picture. And in that one, the picture gets written into. And in the non-visible area below the visible picture, this module copies over one to another. So we can write while the picture is read. So if the picture is read, we can't directly write into that one. That might corrupt our data, and the picture would not display what we wanted to have. So we have it separated by writing, copy, reading. All that is driven by a VGA generator doing the sinks and the counters. The modules I just named are read. This thing reads out in the complete area of visible, visible picture. In the background, there's written into the frame buffer. Here is a little copying, and here is a little copying. Um, don't want to go through all of that now, but it displays how, at which time, what happens. How do we draw? I mentioned earlier, the vector display does the vector itself. That's quite comfortable. So we have points. But how is it on a pixel display? How do we get one line between two points into the, display, into the memory? And therefore, I took the Brazenham algorithm, which is quite a standard algorithm for such things. And the Brazenham, in, in, in short terms, is if you want to draw a line from here to here, this is the ideal line. And these crossings are the pixel you have in the display. And you have to decide um, if you're going from this to this, will I take this pixel or this pixel as the next one to draw the line? Same goes here. Will it be this one? Will it be this one? And we can do that with the Brazen-Maham algorithm um, about these distances. In short terms, if this one is shorter than this one, we will take this point. The whole algorithm, <coughs> I can't go through that uh, at the moment, but that is the one that is writing into the memory. And we put the points from the vector graphics unit into that algorithm to write. So the summary is we need two block RAMs exactly with a size of one picture, so two sizes of picture total. Four modules, which will be which, which have been generated as separate Vivado HLS projects and put together afterwards. The implementation of the Brazenham algorithm for writing the data. Um, we need the data from the vector graphics unit to, to, to use it inside the rasterizer. All that is driven by a pixel clock of 65 megahertz. The output is on VGA by five signals, H, V, red, green, blue. And the synchronization has to be clock cycle perfect. That means this generation module generates these lines of counters into the modules. And what is outputted here as the pixel values should please always be aligned to that one, in, at least in the same latency. It would be very bad if the latency between these two signal, uh, between the sings and the RGB values, would differ at any part of the picture. At least they should be all the same at the same time. That's what I mean with uh, clock cycle perfect. The graphical demo, as I mentioned, is uh, on a Linux system running. Uh, the graphical demo is for controlling the vector graphics engine. We have that vector graphics engine, and I talked about how to stuff, we stuff parameters into that. We have 10 objects. We have for each object some parameters, like the middle point, like rotation, like scaling. And the graphical demo should control these parameters to drive the vector graphics engine. Um, it's run on Peta Linux, which is also by Silings. It's a distri distribution from Silings, especially for these hybrid FPGAs. And it's separated from the Vivado HLS projects. Why are that? Because it's in, in the Linux. Again, what I just said, this is the ARM cores. The whole FPGA is that whole thing. This is the FPGA. This is the ARM cores. Here's the Linux running. Here shall be the, the graphical demo. And here's the vector graphics unit and also the rasterizer. And via a bus system, the object parameters got driven from the application into the vector graphics unit. 
the workflow of all this is I've built all that stuff with Vivado HLS. That is C code to hardware description language in so-called IP cores, intellectual property cores. You can reuse these IP cores in Vivado Design Suite to put them all together to a block design. And that block design has to be synthesized, implemented, and you have to generate a bit stream that it fits on the, on the device afterwards. All that part, synthesize implementation of Bitstream in Vivado Design Suite is not part of my work. It's just for the demonstration um, to get it worked that we see something. Compiling the app, in, uh, including compiling the OS, the Petal Linux, and Petal Linux is capable to put the part we have in the last part of Vivado Design Suite, which is a Bitstream, and the Petal Linux, including the application itself, onto an SD card. We can take that SD card, run it on the Cybo, and there's what you see there. The conclusions. All parts are implemented. One part has been very difficult, that was, and I didn't get it to work in Vivado HLS. I had to code it in a hardware description language, VHDL. That is the part of the generator where I said it has to be clock cycle perfect. I didn't manage to do that in Vivado HLL. I won't put it on the tool chain, but I didn't get it to do. Uh, the source code will be under GPL version 3, because I think it's, um, there might be some people interested in using and developing that, and so I put it open source. And about the evalu evaluation of Vivado HLS, as we've gone not too deep into the implementation and you don't have seen any code from me, um, I will stay on a, on a very high level about the evalu evaluation and say calculations like in the, in the vector graphics unit are very good to do with Vivedo HLS. That works very well. I think that is the intention of Xilinx, why they built that. It's like accelerators putting data in, best stream data, get the same data out. That works very well. So the matrices uh, and the multiplication on the matrices work well. Um, the deeper you go and the more hardware dependent your implementation is, the, the worse it gets. <laughs> You, you, with that abstraction layer of Vivado HLS, you lose some kind of control about the hardware, and the directives you put on the code doesn't solve anything. Not, I don't, it does solve some things, but not all problems. Yeah? So um, that's about the Vivado HLS. Uh, for me personally, there's still a lot more to learn and to improve in that. I will focus on open source project, open source tool chains. Um, I'm not sure if I want to go with commercial tools anymore. And overall, it's been a ton of fun for me. Thank you very much. The thesis and the source code will be available on my own homepage. And the presentation and the video I talked earlier about will go to YouTube on the given channel here. And now we have time for questions and answers. answers. <coughs>